So now let's start to build out the keyboard. So looking here on the Wordle keyboard, we can see that we have all 26 letters of the alphabet plus enter and back in three rows. So first of all, we need to create some kind of list and have all these values in that list and then map those out in three rows. So let's put that into action. Coming back here, the first thing is let's create an enum which represents all the different outcomes. So to create an enum up here in lib, I will go new and here I've created another directory and I'll put this enum in here and also the other constants that we have so for example the colors which we'll create shortly so let's create an enum I'll go new dart file and I'll name this answer stages and to create an enum I'll first type the enum keyword the name of the enum which is answer stage and curly braces and now I can write in the four different stages that we want so the first one is correct the next one is contains the next one is incorrect and the final one is not answered so now we have an enum set up let's create our key value pairs so to do that we can create a map object which holds a collection of key value pairs I will create a new file and I'm going to put that in another directory and I'm going to call this data so in here I'm going to create a dart file and I'll name this keys map and here to create a map I'll type map angle brackets and now I need to pass in the type of the key and the type of the value so the type of the key will be string and the type of the value will be the enum that we created so answer stage and now using these curly braces here we can populate this map and we need to give this a name so I'll call this keys map so to create an entry into this map first put in the key so that's of type string so on a QWERTY keyboard we'll go from left to right top to bottom so the first one is Q then colon and now we put in the value and we'll put answer stage dot not answered so all the initial values will be not answered and in the map each key should just have one value. So now let's populate this. So I will copy this and paste it a bunch of times. Okay, so we've now populated this map with a bunch of key value pairs. And we can also iterate through this map. I'll go to pages, go to home page. And here in the green area, I'll create a child and we want three rows stacked on top of each other so first I'll create a column which has children and the first child will be a row and now we can map out the letters so to map out the letters I'll type keys map and now I need to first press dot and access the entries property and that will allow us to call map and the map function is going to iterate through each entry and for each one it's going to call a function and here we can return a widget so in this case we'll return a text to do that we can type e dot and access the key on the key value pair and because that's of type string we can just put that straight in there and this row takes a list of widgets so let's return a list of widgets I'll type to list and that'll prompt this to run now if I do a hot reload we can see all the letters and enter and back have been printed out onto screen here and now rather than writing out the code for this row three times let's put this in its own widget so right click refactor and we'll name this key board row and now let's put this in its own file so it's a component dart file keyboard row paste that in here and import the material and also the keys map library and now reference that by importing And now if I copy this 
and now we can paste that three times do a hot reload and great so we have this printed on the screen three times and now we want to split this up into three so to do that let's go to the keyboard row and each time this map iterates through and returns a text we need to grab the index so we need to see where it is while it's iterating through so for example if it iterates through Q we should have an index of 1 and if it iterates through to W we should have an index of 2 and so on so to grab that index with a map what we need to do is create a new integer so a new int and I'll name this index and I'll set that to 0 so I'm just putting this here in the build and this will increment each time we go through and return a text so I'm going to remove that arrow and right click replace with a block body so I can put in some code here and all we need to do is write index plus plus so each time we iterate through we'll increment that index by one and here I can write a print function to test this so I'll write print E and then access the key here. Now if we run that awesome so we are seeing this being printed out so 1 is next to Q, W is 2, E is 3 and so on. So now we can use that information to create a simple condition and we can say as long as we're between a minimum and a maximum let's return the text. So first of all we need to know what the minimum and maximum are and here we'll create a couple of final variables final int min and max and we want these to be passed in so we'll use the required and then we can use this dot min and required this dot max and now we can use that information to create our condition so we can say if the index is greater than or equal to our min and our index is less than or equal to our max then let's return that text and we need to return something here otherwise an exception will be thrown so else return a sized box okay cool and we can make that a const and we'll add some curly braces as recommended so now we need to pass the min and the max in so what is the min and max so the first row has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so 1 to 10 the middle row has 9 and the final row has 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay so we can pass in a min and max so we come back to here we've got a min so 1 and a max of 10 the next row a min of 11 and a max of 19 and here a min of 20 and a max of 29 now let's run that alright awesome so we now have our keyboard split into three now let's also add the const modifier here so by right clicking and we'll do that up here and up here so we can just right click and that'll add it for us now that we've built the outline of the keyboard in the next video we'll improve its UI which includes using the inkwell widget